and welcome to the Bethel Church Podcast, located in the heart of the Black Hills. Our focus is to live, grow, love, and serve for the sole purpose to make Jesus known. Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to see you. Let's all stand and worship together today. Sing this together. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Come on, every voice today. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, I've done great things. Oh, you've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things, and I know you will do it again. For your promises, yes and amen, you will do great things. God, you do great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great. In your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. done great things. Let's sing that one more time. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. You've done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. You have done great things. church let's give him praise in this place today we worship you God come on let's just continue to praise him this morning let praise be a weapon let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. 
Let free be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise. Let praise arise. Come on, sing this strong today. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever live Him I with all creation cry. God, we praise you. Let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith arise. Let it rise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever live here life with all creation crying. God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. this is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever live him I with all creation cry. Come on, one last time. We'll see you break down every wall. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift Him I with all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, 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 oh we praise you. Anybody excited for the new year coming up? Yeah. I'm excited. You guys can have a seat. We're doing things a little different today. I know it's a little different today. I thought somebody's going to bring me. Okay, she's coming. Uh, Pastor Keith sends his greetings. He is in Alabama. His grandfather passed away, and so he's going to be doing the funeral there. And so he left me the task of challenging you today. Is that fun? No? It's always fun when you get the notes from someone else, and then they say, here you go. You got to preach them. That's a lot of work. Uh, it's not quite the same, but it's exciting because Pastor Keith is challenging us to something. I'm not preaching per se today, so if you were looking forward to me preaching, sorry. Uh, I'm just going to be sharing a little bit and giving you a challenge that Pastor Keith has given us. So uh, pray for him this week. They have that funeral this week. Also, he went to an Auburn game, so you know he's in heaven right now. 
Uh, he went to the basketball game last night, and so I know he was having a lot of fun. I don't know if they won or lost, otherwise I'd make some comment, but I don't really pay attention. So, uh, But we want to challenge you. Pastor Keith is calling us all to something really fun. Are you guys ready for this? He wants us to join with him in fasting. Yay! I know you guys are excited. Uh, but so we're just sharing a little bit this morning. Like I said, I'm not preaching. I just want to share a little bit about fasting uh, because Pastor Keith wants us for the next 21 days, starting tomorrow, uh, for us to join corporately in fasting. I know you're like, yeah, way to spring that on me. Don't worry, you can still celebrate today. Uh, and this is always voluntary, okay? The one thing we want to talk about fasting, and I hate it with a passion, is when People come in and they're like, yes, our church is fasting, so now I'm fasting, and I'm so hungry, and I'm famished. Don't be that person, okay? <laughs> Anyways, we're going to talk about fasting real quick, and I want to talk about a few things first. Biblical fasting, what it is and what it is not. So there's some misconceptions that happen often, and the first one is that biblically, biblical fasting is not simply going without food. That's a diet, guys. That's starving. It's for a purpose, Biblical fasting is not something only done by fanatics. It's not for the weirdos. It's for everybody. A lot of characters in the Bible, throughout the Bible, you pay attention. Jesus was one of them, also fasted. So it's not just for those weirdos and those fanatics. It's not limited to pastors. Thank goodness we don't have to suffer alone. It is for everyone. And biblical fasting is not fasting social media. It always involves food. Now, I say that because I think it's a great add-on to a fast to say, while I'm fasting food and fasting, doing this fast, I would like to add on social media. Like, I'm not going to be on social media. Or I'm not going to do watch TV for a month. Whatever things you want to add on. But when we're talking about biblical fasting, it always involves food. Okay? So what is biblical fasting? Biblical fasting is refraining from food for a time for a spiritual purpose. It's replacing the time and focus you normally place on food with prayer and meditation in the Word. There's a pastor in uh, Florida, I believe, Jensen Franklin. He's kind of famous. Uh, I like to hear him speak sometimes. But he says, fasting brings one into a deeper, more intimate, and powerful relationship with the Lord. And so when David in Psalm 42 says, deep cries to deep, it seems he's been fasting. We're not for sure, but it says, my tears have been my food and my drink. So in other words, he hadn't been eating whether he was on purpose fasting or if in the middle of a situation because it was a sorrowful time, he wasn't eating. And finally, he says to God, my deep cries out to your deep. His hunger and his thirst for God and deliverance from his situation was greater than his natural desire to eat, right? So he was like, okay, I'm, I, I want God. And it made a door open up that he could receive the deep things of God. Do you know there's layers to God? It's kind of like an onion. Oh, sorry, that's Shrek. Uh, there's layers to God. You know, God has salvation for us all, and that's like the big outside of the onion. And then you peel back in the next layer, he says, I have healing for you. I have this for you. I have all these different layers. And, you know, you grow in Christ, and you become more mature, and you're like, oh, the, God doesn't really have anything new for me. But yet then he opens up another layer, and he's like, here you go, Bill. You might be 100 years old, but uh, I still have things in store for you. That's my Uncle Bill. I got to give him grief. Because God is a layer God, he continually provides. And so when we fast, he can open up new realms to us. In portions of Isaiah 58, and I encourage you, write that down, Isaiah 58. Before, if you do join in this fast with us, uh, we want you to read that chapter. It is a, a chapter of fasting. And we're going to read the first two verses. Isaiah 58, 1 through 2 says, Shout it aloud, don't hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people the rebellion and the descendants of Jacob for their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does what is right and not forsaken for the commands of God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near. Now in Isaiah 58, 1 and 2, he says it seems that they have it figured out. So in other words, these are the correct reasons to fast. Now as you read Isaiah 58, you find out he says... You did it all in futility because you didn't have the right motives. You didn't have the right actions to back it up. And so he goes on about it. But so we actually see what are some of the reasons we fast in these verses. And the first one is to seek God out. We want to know him, to know his ways, to pursue answers to decisions in life, and to intentionally draw closer to him. And one of my favorites is to bring our body under subjection. What does that mean? That sounds like a big, weird Christianese word, right? Subjection. 
The thing is, a couple months ago, several months ago, I spoke a message where I said we're a three-part being, right? Does everybody remember that? I said we are a spirit. We have a soul, which is our emotions and our mind and that kind of connection. And we live in a body, right? But did you know that throughout the Bible we see that we are at war with our body, right? How many of you have seen a donut and you want the donut? That's the war with our body. I've probably given in too many times. Not donuts, they're kind of gross. Anyways, uh, but we have this thing where we, our real self is our spirit man. Our spirit is what actually talks to God because God is a spirit. We are a spirit and that is how we commune, right? And so when we fast, we're saying, my body's not in control. That donut maker guy over there is not in control of saying that this is how I live my life. But no, my spirit man, the one that connects with God is the one I want to be in control. And so when we choose to do things like fasting, it says, body, get under control. I want my spirit man to be in control. And like I said, if you continue reading through verses 3 through 7, we discover that even though on the surface these people appeared that they were fasting for the right reasons, that God was not pleased with their heart and that their fast was ineffective because their secret motives and behaviors were not correct. So what good is fasting if our heart is not right. So we are going to be challenging you for, and we'll get into that a little bit longer, and a little bit later, uh, but we are going to be challenging you to join this fast. Now, fasting is something that I believe is actually absolutely from your heart. It cannot be something that I stay up here and say, hey, for the next 21 days, you should go without food completely. It's not like that. I have watched as people have joined in fasts for years that had the wrong heart and motive, and I just wanted to say, you're doing yourself no good. Because it has to be something that's from your heart. Now, we can make a decision and say, you know what? My heart wasn't in it. I'm going to adjust that a little bit because I want to be a part of this. And that's called growing up in Christ. Okay? I'm here to whoop you today. Sorry, Pastor Keith. How do we do that then? How do we fast? We ask God for guidance and direction first and foremost. The first imperative in deciding to fast is that we do so out of a sincere desire to seek God's guidance and direction. And we'll get into why we're specifically doing it at Bethel. But we do it because we want to grow closer to God. Fasting for the sake of making a show in front of others or fasting to ask God for things that are clearly outside of his will is futility. If you're fasting and you're saying, I'm fasting so that God kills my (laughs) ex-husband. Just say, no, I was kidding. (laughs) Totally kidding. That's not going to work. If you're fasting because you say, oh God, I'm fasting because I want to be a millionaire. That's not what the reason is. But if you're coming before God and you're saying, God, I'm fasting because I know I'm screwed up. I'm messed up. I can't do this. I need you. I want to know you better. I want your guidance and deliverance. That is what is important. So then what do you do? You choose how long you're going to fast. So Pastor Keith has challenged us to 21 days. That comes from the book of Daniel, where uh, Daniel chapter 9, where uh, Daniel fasted for 21 days for God's mercy and help for the people of Jerusalem. That was their motive. So we're going to go for 21 days. Now, what part of that you play, that's up to you. Uh, You can choose your method of fasting. There's three biblical ways of fasting. There's absolute fasting, normal fasting, and partial fasting. Absolute fasting is not one we recommend, okay? That one needs to be only if God has told you to do that. That means not eating or drinking. I don't recommend that. Let me say that on camera, online, you hear me. We're not recommending that. But there's normal fasting, which means you, abs- you abstain from food for, uh, a, a, and you drink water, right? So you're, you're not going to die of starvation or of thirst. Uh, and then there's partial fasting. Partial fasting is kind of one of two ways. Partial fasting can be like, I'm going to fast lunch every day, and uh, th- that could be it. Partial fasting can also be, I'm not going to eat meats and uh, sugars and sweets and soda for the next 21 days. And that could be a partial fast as well. So fasting can be, there are, all of those methods are in the Bible, different types. Uh, Daniel and the the boys, Meshach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they they abstain from certain foods for a fast, right? And so you can choose what way you want to go about this. Uh, We are just inviting everyone to participate in unity in some manner as we do this, right? Fasting requires focus. So the whole thing about Fasting is that you have to set aside a special time to pray. Otherwise, we're just dieting, right? We talked about that. And so let's say you do a partial fast where you give up certain things. 
then we just say, hey, make sure then maybe like nine o'clock every day, I'm going to set that as my time to pray for half an hour, or I'm going to do this. So if you are doing a partial fast, it's more important for you to make sure you set a specific time. Obviously, if you're doing something like, I'm not going to have lunch, then your lunch hour at work, you can just skip lunch and pray and, and meditate during that time. Uh, my, obviously, caveat, if you have health conditions or you're taking medicine, please be thoughtful before you do something that's drastic. Uh, make sure you hear from the Holy Ghost and don't throw out wisdom, okay? We're not one of those kookies that says, yeah, go off all your medicine for the next 21 days. Please don't do that, okay? We're not advising that. My biggest thing about fasting is fasting should be personal. And what I mean by that is although we're doing this as a corporate fast, it doesn't mean something we advertise on social media like, oh, guys, I'm sorry because I've been fasting for 20 days. Please don't do that. There's a verse about that. Matthew 6, 16 through 18 says, When you fast, don't look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they're fasting. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. In other words, this is something between you and God. There's nobody going to be checking up on you saying, like, are you doing the fast? Are you sticking with this? It's going to be something that we're just encouraging you to join with us. So why are we fasting at Bethel? The next 21 days will lead up to a, what we call Vision Sunday on January 28th. It'll be following. And we're going to be focusing on seeking God for our church, for his spirit to give us direction. And as a church family, when we all fast together and set aside that time in unity, God is honored and he rewards the sacrifice both corporately and individuals. There will be breakthroughs that can happen. Healing might happen. Freeding might happen. Miracles might happen. And so we want you to at least challenge yourself in some way, whether it's, you know, giving up lunch for a week, or maybe it's three days, and you're like, I've never fasted before, and you're like, I want to do three, or I want to do seven days. We are just asking that everybody try something, because we cannot be a, a body of Christ if we don't try to go deeper. Amen? Amen. God is challenging us. Pastor Keith is challenging us. One thing I want, Pastor Keith wanted me to really hit on is that fasting is not a prerequisite for revival. We are not fasting for revival. We're fasting for God to move in our heart. If you actually look, if the uh, disciples came to an area and they didn't want to hear the word of God, God, that Jesus told them to move on. They didn't sit and say, oh, we're going to pray and fast for revival in this town. No, they moved on. Revival can happen as a byproduct of fasting, but it's not the reason we fast. We fast to grow closer to God. So we're asking you to join with us. Also, one other thing we wanted to mention is fasting is not trying to get freedom from Satan. We already have freedom. James 4, 7 says, if we resist the devil, he will flee from us because we have the name of Jesus. Now, some people might say, well, there's a certain scripture that says Jesus answered them and said, this demon could only be dealt with through prayer and fasting. That was a situation because there was lots of different strongholds in play. That is not what God has given us. He has given us authority in Jesus' name. So we can resist the devil. We are not here saying, God, please help me resist the devil. He said, just tell him to go in Jesus' name. Okay? So we are not fasting so that we can have victory over Satan. We're having it because we're disciplining ourselves to draw closer to God and say, God, we want to be in this moment. So we challenge you as we begin this new year to participate with us, the staff, the leadership, as we fast and pray for our church, ourselves, and our city. We ask that as we seek God for more of him and deep, uh, gain a deeper relationship, that many of you will have fresh visions some of you might break addictions. Some of you may receive healing in areas. Some of you may have breakthrough of different uh, 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 things that are going on. But we want to invite you to join in this corporate fast. Like I said, this, there is no pressure. But let me give you an opportunity that if you've never done anything in the, like this in your life, try it. Just try it with us. And I'm not saying you have to do the whole 21 days. I think you should try. I think you can do a little bit of something. But join with us because this year is a crucial year. We are believing God for moving Bethel to the next level that he has for us. But that has to come from within. That has to come from you. It has to come from me. It cannot just be Pastor Keith. And he's saying, we need vision. I want vision for this church. We should be praying that God gives him that vision as the head of our church. And so I challenge you for the next 21 days, in some sort, please join with us in this fast. God has great things for you. He has great things for me. He has great things for this church. And so, Pastor Keith, 
This is your challenge to everyone as he's watching. Join us for the next 21 days to go a little deeper. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray and then we're going to continue with some prayer and some worship for the rest of the day. And then we're going to take some communion together because that's the right way to end one year and start the next. Amen. Amen. So we're going to have some fun. So I wanted to get loud and rowdy in here because let me tell you, heaven is not quiet. And so we're going to praise and worship together into the new year, believing God for great things in 2024. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we can gather together and worship your name and praise you. We thank you that as we start this challenge this week, God, that you would be with us, that you would lead us, that you would give us direction and help us to try something we may have never tried before as we decide to go deeper with you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
to come up and pray for our leaders and the first thing I think of is our pastors um, we often think of the challenges that are going on in your life and remind people if if God feels like he can cause a little havoc in your life and it keeps you from doing what God wants imagine how much more he wants for your leaders if he can cause tension or dissension among them or personal challenges um that's why I ask you all, not just today, to pray for your leaders. Pray for them every single day. Um, I try to, and at times I don't always do it, but I try to remember our pastors in prayer every single day before I get out of bed. Um, the other thing we think about is we'll pray for our leaders and our political leaders and those that are in, in a civil spot for us. And it doesn't say just pray for those you like. It said pray for them all. Um, sometimes we got to pray more for those that we don't like. Um, not that bad things would happen to them, but that good would happen, and they would make wise choices on our behalf. So I want you, all of you to join me together this morning as we pray for our pastors and our leaders, Lord. Heavenly Father, first I'm humbled to be here to lead everyone before you, to say protect our pastors. Put a hedge around them, Lord. Head a hedge around their mind, Lord, that gives them confidence to know that they can be doing your will. And when things don't go right in their life, that they would get their confidence from you. Lord, when they're not sure they're doing the right things, and they're not sure they're leading the right way, Lord, I pray that you'll give them wisdom to be able to lead wisely, to lead wisely amongst each other and to those in their congregation. Help them to be an example, like each one of us, to be example to the world, that they would see the love that we have, and they would say, those are the people I want to be like. Not, oh, that's what a Christian is, I don't want to be like that. Instead, they should know us with the fact that we are forgiving, caring, loving. Doesn't mean we overlook everything. It means we are strong. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will give them joy in their life, joy in their ministry, that you would fill them with a fulfillment that says, I'm doing the will of the Lord, and they will know your presence in their life. I pray that you will bless them with spiritual wisdom. I thank you, Lord, for um, giving them to us and help us to be grateful and to lift them up and encourage them every day. Then, Lord, I pray for those that are in civic leadership, Lord, for our president of our country and for our governor and those that were around us, our mayor, each one that is taking a leadership position. It could be a, it could be a, a sheriff. It could be just about any position. It could be people in our schools, Lord. Whenever we have those people in our lives, I pray, Lord, that we will pray for them. And you said if we see their weaknesses, that is so we will pray for those weaknesses, not tear them down. Lord, we lift them up before you again, Lord, that they would make wise choices so that we can live peaceable and lives that honor you and that we can change our society to lift up the name of Jesus every day. That our, their choices will allow us to honor you. And I pray, Lord, that you will allow wisdom to come in their lives. And Lord, I just pray for this congregation, Lord, that they would be a people that honor you in each and everything they do is everyone in here is a leader in one way or another. We either allow people to follow us to good or they follow us to bad. Help us to make wise choices so that we are good leaders for those around us. We thank you for your love and thank you for your kindness. In Jesus' name, amen. every 
song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever
Let's sing this strong. Come on, I will build my life. those words, I declare I will build my life upon your word, upon your rock. And as we transition from 2023 to 2024, you know, we get all those weird, hyped up, like, oh, it's a grand new year, and it's all these things, right? But the truth is, looking back on 2023, how many of you have come through some struggles? I know I have. How many have faced adversary, adversaries? <laughs> I can speak. I have, you have, we have overcome some things and sometimes we forget to look back and say, thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. And let me tell you, from this year, I thank the Lord that I'm here, that I'm alive, that my dad has gone through surgeries and is still alive, that there's things that we can celebrate. There may be trials, you may be in the middle of something, but oh, God is still working. And so as we end this year, we want to say, God, thank you for 2023. Some of us might be saying, thank God it's over. And that's okay, but we're here today and we want to say, thank you, Jesus. And you may be saying, man, we're singing a lot of songs. I don't really like to sing. But if you look at the words, it's a declaration of love and commitment to God. I will build my house upon you, Lord. I want you to be the rock, the foundation of my life. And so we are declaring to God, saying, God, I love you. Have your way. So we're going to pray one more time. And this time we're going to pray for 2024. Not some cheesy like, oh God, it's going to be this fantastic year. We're going to weird weird declarations. No, but we're going to say, God, in 2024, I want you to change me. I don't care about anything else. Take a hold of my life and put me in the places you want me to be. Give me the words to speak. Put the people in my life I need to speak to. Make me stop spitting all over. God has big plans for us. And we're going to declare them today. So in this time, I don't want to be praying alone. I will lead in prayer. But I want you to actually make this personal. I want you to speak out of your mouth the things you want God to do for you this year. Maybe it's a healing in your body. Maybe it's a healing in your marriage. Maybe it's a child returning that has ran away. Maybe it's some things your kids are facing. Maybe it's a health crisis. Maybe it's a financial crisis. Maybe it's a depression and anxiety crisis. Maybe it's something you feel like you can't face. I want you to declare it as we pray. That 2024 is the year of victory. That 2024 is the year that God became the sole purpose of my life. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we come before you right now as individuals, but also corporately, Lord God. And we say, God, have your way in us. Make 2024 the year of victory in our lives, not only for us, but for our church and for our city and for our nation and for the world. God, we pray that as we leave 2023, we say prayers of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you for bringing us to this day. Thank you for the healings and for the the, the, the deliverance from depression. Whatever it is that we've faced and we've overcome, God, we say thank you. But God, as we move into 2024 right now, come on, pray with me. Lord God, we declare these things in our lives. As they declare addictions are broken, as they declare that their families and their marriages are healed, as they declare that their financial issues are waning, Lord God, we pray that you would touch bodies. We pray that you would break addictions. We pray that you would make this a year that people know you in ways they've never experienced before. God, we pray for 2024 for Bethel Church. Lord God, we pray that you would give vision to Pastor Keith in a way that he's never had before, that you will begin to pour out a new spirit upon him for our church and for our lives as he leads us. As a church, God, I pray for health and healing over all of us in 2024. I pray that we will begin to be bold and declare your word wherever we go, that we wouldn't be afraid, that we wouldn't be timid about your uh, gospel, but God, we would go forth and preach the good news. 
God, we pray that this year many lives are changed, that more people come to know you in these services, that more people are healed in these services. And God, not that we want revival, but we want you. Start in us, God. May 2024 be the year that you reign and rule in Bethel Church, in Rapid City, God, that there would be a change in our city because of our hearts changing. God, we speak against all the murders in this area. God, we pray for the north side right now. Lord, let us have an impact. God, that our teen center would go forth and these kids would grow up with a reason to live. And that as they come to our teen center, they would be ministered to and healed of their hurt, healed of their pain, healed of their broken families. And Lord, that they would know you. God, we pray for Hannah and Isaac as they have been leading this teen center. God, we pray that you would begin to pour out a spirit upon them to speak words they don't even know they have on the inside of them. God, we pray for Love, Inc. as they partner with us in that. We pray that you would bless their ministry and bless the ministry that is happening here. God, we pray for our youth and our children. God, pour out your spirit on Pastor Brielle that this year she would speak life into our children in ways she's never done before. We pray for our youth, Pastor, wherever he is, come in in the name of Jesus. That you would bring the right person in in this time for this church, for this movement, God. That it would move in our youth. Lord God, we pray for the youth of our church. Don't let them be lost in this transition. God, move in the midst of this transition. We pray for those that are coming in for the different positions at this church, God. That you would have your way and you would bring the right people. But help us to step up in the midst. God, those that are in this service that haven't began to, to, to step into the ministries you called them to, I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you will lay it on their hearts, the things that they can step up and do. God, move in our hearts in this congregation. I pray blessing, blessing for the new year that as we follow you, as we join in this fast, even God, that you would pour out your spirit in a way we've never experienced before. But we declare that 2024 is your year, Lord, to move in our hearts, that we'll look back and say, this is the year you moved and changed me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
happy to get those elements to you. I've got some in the back there. In Mark chapter 14, in verse 22, it says, And while they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, praised God, and gave thanks, and asked him to bless it to their use. Then he broke it, gave to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Something we have to remember is that Holy Communion was never intended to be an empty ritual with little or no meaning to those who participate in it. We take the bread first, which we'll do in a moment, because Jesus is the bread of life. He is the word made flesh, as it says in John chapter 6. And as we partake of this bread, we take him as our living bread, the only source that can truly satisfy our hunger in life. So as we take this bread together, I want you to realize that there is nothing else you need in this world. As we feast on this bread, and it sounds really weird if you're not been in church to eat a flesh of Jesus, that sounds strange. But the truth is we do it as a remembrance of all that he provides. Healing, prosperity, health, uh, uh, breaking of addictions, power in his name. And so today let's pray and take this together. Father, we thank you for your body that was broken for us, that gives us everything we need, that when we need something, we can feast on the bread of life. And as Pastor Keith spoke last week, the bread that you represented when you came to this place, even in the place, the city of bread, you were born. God, we take this bread and remember and thank you for all that you provide. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's take that together. Verse 23 continues. He also took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank it. And he said to them, this is my blood, the new covenant, which is being poured out for many. You see, we remember that he has done this for us. We take him as our living drink. The only source that can satisfy our thirst As we drink the cup, it's the equivalent of sprinkling blood or shedding blood on the sacrifice of his body. And it's important that we take both the bread and the cup. And if people attempt to remove the blood, they're removing the power of what his blood did for us. In the Old Testament, blood was sprinkled to take away, to atone for our sins. He took them away forever. What a greater covenant we have. 
So today, as we remember the blood that was shed so that we can stand before Jesus in heaven and and celebrate with him the rest of eternity and thank him for delivering us from our sinful nature and taking the penalty for our sin, we thank you for this blood. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blood that you shed on Calvary so that we can have life and life abundantly. We thank you for all that it provided as far as our sins are being washed away and that we can spend eternity with you and that we don't have to live a life that continually has to say, I've messed up and go get a lamb. But God, you were our lamb and we thank you for it. In this moment, we remember in sincere heart, forgive us where we've missed it. May we take this and remember, but also choose to live our lives according to your plan and according to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to have them sing that chorus one more time and then we'll close together. Because your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name Stands above the law, above all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions. Your name stands above them all. Your name, because your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. Above all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name it stands above them all, and the angels cry, Holy, all creation cries, Holy, you are lifted high. in our hearts. We thank you for this new year that's coming up. God, that you may be glorified as we leave this place. If you would like to learn more about our church or give to our ministry, please visit our website at Bethel.ag.